Welcome to Thomas Podcast. How are you guys on this lovely Tuesday? Yes, I just came back from parents' evening. Anyway, do you know what? Show must go on. I have this lovely guest called Janine Russell. She's a coach and she's somebody that does so much. And I think she's somebody that's like a motivator. She's somebody that really motivates people. And I'm so happy to have her joining me today. All right. So I hope you can enjoy this. And I also want to say thank you for people that are watching on Instagram, also on YouTube, that are liking uh, on Instagram and, and YouTube. So please, thank you. I want to say a big thank you so much. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. So I'm waiting for my lovely guest, Janine Russell, who's a coach. And I would like to know more about the thing that she does. All right? Okay, Jada? People are loving the life we are together, Jada. Keep up the good work. All right? Okay. Oh, lovely. Let me... Okay. That, did that work? One more time, maybe? Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Jada. You deserve it. Hello, Janine. Hello. How are, How are you? you? Can you see me? No. <laughs> this, uh, that happens sometimes, but trust me, when we finish, I'll send it to you and you'll be able to that see works. yourself. We oh, I like to right? see people's faces. It's not fair. Uh, I know it, it, it happens sometimes. It is so annoying. I don't know why. But don't worry. You know what? I, I used to do the lives all the time and it only ever happened once. I don't know what causes that. I have no idea. Let me, uh, I'm going to try and come out and then I'm going to join again. Let's just see yeah, if it on. works. Let's do, let's do that. Go on. Okay. Yeah. All see right. you shortly. All right. Bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're right. Hi, Janine. So Jenna, because I've got a guest called Janine, so we don't want to get it confused. <laughs> I hope you're right. Oh. No, she's coming back. She's coming back. Because you know, sometimes when I do a live, people don't see, I don't know what to say, they don't see themselves. You know, so let's see how it works this time go live let's see maybe it works hopefully let's have a look jenna okay jenna hey nope i still can't see you don't worry don't worry it happens unfortunately but listen you look nice and wonderful so please introduce yourself to me hello i am janine russell what can i say i am a woman of many hats I'm a mum of three. I have been a probation officer for 20 odd years. I am a transformation coach and an author. Where should I, should I continue? No, I've done a few things. <laughs> and um, my favourite, apart from being a mum, is definitely to coach people um and i also run an organization called take the reins and we deliver programs to p women in prison wow so that is my, my so real you... baby <laughs> i don't know where to start with you let's just start about <laughs> the probation officer so when mm. did you do that the worst thing that I don't like to speak about but yes that oh, i have been doing it's fine it's fine it's part of me I have been do. I did. I started when I was twenty two. Okay. <laughs> so you've done that, and then, I mean, what made you go into that in the first place? Oh gosh. So when I was younger, one of my friends went into prison. I think I was about fifteen or sixteen. One of my friends went into prison, and. I don't know. I just was like, I really want to help him. I don't want him to ever be there again. I want to communicate with him and just see what it is that I can do to make him stop like doing the things that have led him to go into prison. So I used to kind of write and write letters to him. And I think I was studying psychology and sociology A-level at the time. So I used to send him like 
you know, the things that we were doing in my lesson and we would just speak about it and have these discussions. Mm -hmm. um, he was very, very intelligent, but just didn't use it in the right way. And also came from a really problematic family background. But um, I just was really keen to help other people like him. Mm -hmm. So I looked into it a little bit more um, and I said to him, oh, I think I want to be a prison officer. And he was like, what? No way. You can't be a, you can't be a screw. I don't No, 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 no. So then I was like, okay, what else does, works with people that are in prison that I can still kind of, it will be acceptable to him. And then I found probation and then I asked him and he was like, yes, that's, that sounds good. Um, and then, so I, did the application form and the same day that I found out that he was killed was the same day that I found out I didn't get into probation. I'm so sorry. To, I mean, now, now I get why I didn't want to talk about it. Sorry if I feel like... It's I funny. No, that is... You know what? It's a good reason. The reason that I went into it has been mainly to help impact and change lives. And that passion hasn't gone away but i just do it in different ways now but i think it's his legacy a little bit to me for me to do the work that i have done and although i didn't get it the first time i applied again and then i got in and then yes for a long 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 time i've worked with many young people adults women men who have been in the criminal justice system and you know parts of it i've really enjoyed parts of it have been difficult um but i think it's made me who i am that's amazing and, yeah amazing so when did you start um coaching when did you start becoming a coach you know that a probation officer is basically a coach it's just okay. called a different there thing go. there you go and i don't i don't think i realized i don't think i realized that i was coaching people i knew that i was helping i knew that i was impacting and helping them to make changes in their lives but i don't think i understood really what coaching itself was until i did a course in 2019 i did a counseling course mm -hmm. and during that course we looked at coaching yeah and I was like, oh my gosh, I just fell in love with it. I was like, I actually knew, I knew I didn't want to be a counsellor, but I wanted to gain the skills to, to better my um, practice and kind of understanding of being able to work with people who've had, you know, trauma and stuff like that. But when I did the course, they spoke about coaching and I realised that is what I really like to do. It's just mm -hmm. trying to help people along their journey from kind of A to B um helping them to realize their dreams their potential and i realized that i had been doing it for a really long time but just didn't have the kind of language or the vocabulary for what it was actually called so mm -hmm. um yeah since then i've just been probably having the confidence i guess to have or reach out to more paid clients rather than clients who are forced to work with me <laughs> yeah that's fantastic one of my friend here uh called jenna she said you need any more workers to support or collaborate with are you willing to collaborate and have people help you what you're doing i think i'm getting to that point i don't know whether they mean in the probation probation are always looking for people oh. <laughs> they are always looking for stuff um so that if that's the information that you want more of, I can definitely um, message me and I can send you the link to um, the page for the jobs for probation. In terms of the work that I'm doing myself independently within the prisons, I, I am getting to that point. I'm just in the process of getting some more funding and then we will be building a team to be able to kind of um, execute the vision that we have for the work that we want to do with the women in prisons so fantastic i'm getting there i'll, wow. I'll be with you soon yes i'm gonna make sure I'll, I'll tell her to contact you so i love to read and yeah i read somewhere that you're author so tell me about that journey when did you start when did you start it being an author i love i love i love books i love reading 
is something that uh, I always did as a child. And I always, even as a little girl, I wrote these stories and I always wanted to have to write a book. But I think it was just something that I kind of put to the back seat, if that makes sense. And then I had my daughter. It's really kind of ironic. My daughter, my first daughter, it's her birthday tomorrow and she's going to be 16. And so when I first had her, which was the 6th of December, 20, 2007, sorry, I can't even remember what I'm saying, 20. Yeah. 6th of December, 2007, my journey of motherhood began. And I really found it very difficult, the transition from, I guess, being, you know, this independent, person and then becoming a mother and I, I there's lots of areas of it that I really struggled with so I started to kind of document things of the journey I'm a really I find write, writing very cathartic I find it as like an outlet and a kind of tool and I've always journaled throughout kind of like my teenage years even to now I still journal so I started to, to document the journey of motherhood so it started in 2007 and I didn't publish the book until 2017. So all of those notes and all of the journaling that I did, I then kind of put into chapters and then I had a really amazing um, book mentor who took me through the process from kind of having it like as a Word document to actually getting it published and ready and having the book to hold in my hand. I'm clapping. <laughs> I can hear it. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you. you know, the yes. reason, and honestly, I know I've been pushing because I, I really like what I'm doing the podcast. I love young people. They come to me, especially in my school. They're like, Miss, we like the content. We like these people. We talk about real stories. This is not soap. This is not reality TV. This is actually real people. And they like, and, and the thing is, they always tell me, look, after secondary school, I'm worried. What am I going to do? And I tell them, look, yeah. As much as we are putting pressure on you guys with GCSE and all of that, it's not about that. It's about what you're good at or what you can bring mm -hmm. to people. It's more about what's in you, not your, your grades or your qualification. For me, I personally feel like some students, they're not going to go to that route because this is not for them. But there are things yeah. out there, like the things that you spoke about, uh, I'm not saying that it's easy to get into, but with will, like if you really want something, you can go out there and get it. I bet you never knew you're gonna be an author one day. We're like, that's it. I didn't. And you know what? I I have a podcast and it's called Purpose Driven Life, and it's about purpose. And the reason that I kind of started it was that I want people, old, young, wherever you are in your journey, to understand that we're actually put on this earth for a reason. Yeah, there's a reason that you're here. You might not be academic. I don't think. You know, I know you're you work in the education system. I'm yeah. as a mum of three children who are going through different parts of the education system. I'm not loving it. I don't think that it is purpose or it fits all of our children. I agree. And i know that there's a you know there's laws and there's things that we have to send our children to school and stuff like that i think if i did it differently now i'm not sure maybe i might home homeschool my kids um but i realized that it doesn't fit everybody and they put so much pressure to get these results and get these grades and some people are more creative some people are more sports money some people are more entrepreneurial and the actual way that the kind of um, curriculum works might not actually work for them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. my daughter, whose who's birthday is tomorrow, she, I love her. She has got like this real fire and she's very outspoken. She believes in what is right and she does not feel any way to kind of articulate that. But guess what? It means that I have to go to the school for meetings like a lot <laughs> oh and... I was, listen we have me even my friend jenna is saying here i when people don't understand is that i used to be a troublemaker and because <laughs> honestly people are like oh you're new teaching 
I used to be one of those people skipping classes, doing all the nonsense to my teachers. And I was really like in detention every single day. Even people didn't even have to write my name. They knew <laughs> to expect me. And people are like, but why are you teaching? And I said, to be honest with you, I don't like the aspect of what you said, you know, it's all about result and all of that. And also it's about the data, the progress. I like the human contact. I like to yeah. speak to my students every day sometimes it's not even about schools but how, how was your day today what are you doing next week and things i like that part of teaching but the other part i feel like it takes away because some kids are there in school because this is the safe place mm -hmm. now you're gonna put pressure on them that's not that's not mm -hmm. what they need some of them are, are facing mental health problems mm -hmm. what are we doing about that what are we yes. not you know doing more about that you know, like, oh, yeah, but you still have to do your exams. You still... Who cares? Mm, what do you teach? I teach MFL. I teach French and Spanish. Oh, do you? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I've got Both of my daughters are doing that. They hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for everyone. And honestly, it's not, it's not easy. But for me, really and truly, I like, you know, especially those who have been challenging behaviours. I like those type of kids. I don't know why, but I do. People think I'm mad, but I say, listen those people that have got attitudes they have something like you don't I see i better them. send my daughter to you to your school <laughs> please please come they have something special i rather you have this this attitude and behavior than just be blank and not nothing yeah. boring that's, that's how i see it's boring it's, i like but I like you know what spoken. i can hear your passion i can hear your it's not just a job to you and for me i wish there were more i wish more people taught because they are passionate and that is part of their gifting and their purpose rather than people doing it just to get paid yeah because there's a lot of i feel like there's a lot of teachers that they don't they don't like it they don't even like kids <laughs> so yeah some of them they, they don't they did and, and to be honest when you talk about being paid teaching doesn't pay well no <laughs> it's a bit like probation <laughs> i'm telling you but the thing is what i find in enriching is the contact with the kids today i had parents mm -hmm. evening and i had oh. some kids i taught before they came to sell misty ass that's what they call me so thank you for everything done for my son and things like that for me this alone is you see not it's wealth that's why i call it because the, the paycheck is rubbish <laughs> but listen, you, know, you know something and you, one of one of the things that i have to say is that you never forget a good teacher. You do not, the, the impact and the way that you can just influence a young life is something that sticks forever. I don't know if you ever saw the, Adele did like a, um, a, a concert and yes. in the concert, did you see it where the teacher was sitting in the, in, the, in the crowd and Adele started talking, she didn't know she was there and she was talking about how this teacher made this impact on her and, you know she's never forgotten her and you know even this week i was speaking to my sixth form tutor um yeah. this woman i just i always have to big her up because i think of my young self at like 16 17 and i wasn't i was never bad i was never like had a bit of attitude but i was quite a you know i i did as i was told and stuff i didn't really get into trouble but i know that i found um the A level was really challenging at one point, and I did feel like giving up. And this woman literally spoke life into me, and I big her up every time. Like at my book launch, at um, yeah, all of the kind of significant points of my life, I remind her of what she did and how much that has made me who I am. And we go out for dinner and we meet for lunch, and like I will never ever stop. Um, loving her like we've obviously got a, a friendship and a relationship now but i will never forget how she spoke life into me when i when i needed it the most so keep doing what you're doing is what i'm saying thank you, thank you so so much and listen you need to you need to give me tips i want to write my book one day okay people. already i can coach you through that process oh, please <laughs> teach me that is what that Let's is what i like to do dinner. the most because i think it's um something that i didn't think was going to happen at one point and then when i did it and i went through the process and you know i've written two books that are published now wow I, I you was like, the links to those books 
I will I will put them on there. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how to do it on at the same time because if I come out of this, I don't know whether it will. I can post it afterwards and then you can yeah, put yeah. it on the on the live or whatever. Um, they're on Amazon and most of the like major book um, stores. Um, and you know everybody's got their own style of writing and. I didn't go the traditional route with publishing. I self-published my books because I just didn't want anyone to tell me no. <laughs> and I just wanted them to be done and to be published. So, well yeah, I think we've all got, I think there's a lot of us that have books in us. We just need someone to help us to get through that actual process. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you a link to my, to my um, how do you call it? I did a blog because I, I had so many things I wanted to get out. And then somebody said, oh, just, just write it down. I said, oh, the book, I wasn't ready yet. So I started, you know, my blog and I just released everything. And some people were like, oh my days, I can't believe you went through that. And I'm like, listen, it, it's a therapy. And I'm- Yes, it is. Like, yeah, so I feel like this, is that how you feel when you release your books? Does it feel the therapy? Is that why? Does, is I that think the writing, the writing process definitely is therapeutic for me. Um, the, the process, I'm a person, I'm like, as a coach, I think you're quite a goal driven and you like to see something to fruition. Yeah. Um, and I love to take people through that process, but I also love that process for myself. Um, so for me, it was just like a sense of achievement. It was a sense of, oh my gosh, like I've wanted to do this for so long. And there were so many obstacles. It took literally took 10 years from writing to publishing to do the first book. And the other thing is that I feel like books leave a legacy. Yeah. Podcasts leave a legacy as well. Like I think about, you know, if you put this on YouTube and you put it on Spotify, even after I'm gone, my words will still be there for people to see and to read. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like that is part of what I'm here to do is to communicate something, a message to help people through um, adversity or a struggle. Um, my the book, The Naked Truth About Having a Baby was definitely my journey of motherhood. And it took so long that I ended up having like two more children <laughs> in oh, between no. the time from start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you and then the second great. book is about marriage. Mm. So it's the naked truth about marriage, and I don't know. I just felt like I have I've been blessed to have found somebody that I've been in a really long relationship with, and we're married now. But I want other people to understand and to get an insight into marriage. Because I think it's like one of those things that people like motherhood is things that people don't really tell you the truth about. Yeah. So that is why it's my naked truth. And um, it's like they're very heartfelt and honest. And um, what was the words that somebody used the other day? Uh, what's the word? Um, integrity. Let's, say it again. Integrity, maybe. It, it's just quite real it's really like it's my <laughs> voice i don't i haven't wrote in it i write like i'm speaking so raw i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> raw definitely definitely yeah. oh. do i think that writing the book was hard because i want to write a book but i'm dyslexic listen being dyslexic i believe is a superpower and the beauty of writing a book is that the process is that you need somebody to edit it so I would say just get your thoughts and what you want to say down and then the editor is the person who has that skill and that gifting to be able to transform your writing into something that is legible and under is able to be understood by other people. The other thing or alternatively you could do an audiobook. Mm. Because a lot of people struggle with reading and writing I've I've never actually well not never I haven't yet put my books on audio but it's something that people have asked for quite a lot um because not everybody enjoys reading a book but they might want to hear it yeah. so 
Good point. Think about the different ways and the different platforms and the different um, mediums that you can use if if you find writing hard. But I don't believe that your dyslexia would stop you from writing a book at all. No. Honestly, Jenna, you got this, yeah? But honestly, <laughs> I want to say a big, big thank you for your time, for everything that you do, to have you here. I like the positivity. I like the experience you have and you want to share with people. I mean, you're really 100% real. You're some, <laughs> you know, a role model, not only for your uh -huh. girl, for everyone. So any advice would you give to young people who, who are, who's going to be watching? What would you say to them if you can give them one advice? Oh, gosh. I don't think I could give one. How about top three? Uh, oh, I don't know if I could limit it to. My first one would be to be yourself. Show up as you and your authentic self at all times. <sighs> Second would be to find your support network, your mentors or people who are able to influence you, inspire you, encourage you, whether, wherever that might be. It might be your parents, it might be your cousins, it might be a teacher, it might be somebody else. But to find those people who are going to speak life and encourage you at, uh, at all the different journeys of your, you know, all the different parts of your journey. Number three would be, I think I would sum it up as to, to do and to find what you love. To do and find what you love. I love, I love that advice. It's beautiful. And that can be a journey in itself. But once it, 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 I feel like to be able to do all of that, is like a whole journey of yourself like i feel like i have spent a lot of time and that's been through um through my faith like you know i believe in god i go to church i listen to a lot of positivity i listen to podcasts i listen to sermons um i have had counseling that has really really helped me to find out who i am and why i function in the way that i do but in all of doing those things, I've worked out who I am and what I love and what's really important to me. And I feel like that then can help you to know what you're going to do with the rest of your life. So I'm, I feel like I'm only just getting started a little bit. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think this platform is really amazing. And I think young people need to stories from different people who've overcome you know difficult things that are achieving and people that look like them as well that yeah. that they can feel that they can relate to and that are you know like a tangible real example of someone who's like oh well actually i'm i look like her or she could be you know my big sister or whatever so to help to help them to feel like it's possible yeah do you know what i mean because i look at some of the authors like i look at i don't know jk rowling like yeah she's doesn't it's just it's not really someone that i that is from my world do you know what i mean so yeah i think it's it's good for me to do that for other people that's fantastic and carry on what you're doing and more Thank you. we'll find out more about you especially my students and we're gonna keep in touch uh, definitely covering you about this book thing and not just me jenna my friend as well but thank you so much for everything you do and we're definitely gonna keep in touch so please make sure you send me all those links about oh. i'm gonna send you my link about my blog but we're gonna keep in touch and thank definitely you so definitely thank you for having me so that's nice been like i don't think i've actually done this on the other thing i've always been the one who's hosting it <laughs> so it's really <laughs> it's nice to be on the other side Anytime you need me for anything, you let me know. I'm there for you. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll be calling you. Oh, I'll be calling you. <laughs> so much. Yeah. Have a long day. Take care. Thing and take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.